Hello guys, uh, today I'm going to teach you all about SJF. They are, SJF stands for short job first. There are two SJF you need, one is preemptive and non preemptive. We're going to emphasize on preemptive SJF. Okay guys, so this is the question we're going to do today. So um, in every SJF, it doesn't matter non preemptive or preemptive, we have to know that every uh, process occur depends on the arrival time so uh, so the, we have to see which process uh, began first from this we know that p4 started first okay so let's write it down first at zero seconds p4 began the execution and then uh, at the same time let's write down the burst time of the p4 okay what it meant by burst time here is the time for it to uh, exact uh, for it to execute Okay, now it's the remaining time for it to execute is 5 seconds now. During that 5 seconds, if you see the questions, there is an interrupt. There is an one more process entering which is P2 and P3 at 3 seconds. Because of this arrival, it causes uh, P4 to be interrupted at the in between and to be stopped at P at 3 seconds. It's, it's As I mentioned earlier, it's because of P2 and P3 is arriving at three seconds okay now uh, put that at the side and let's now count the remaining burst time okay we know that it stopped at three three seconds so we have to minus with the burst time which was given which is five minus three so you get two seconds so this is the amount of time left for the p4 to be executed at the same time since i have mentioned earlier that p2 and p3 has been uh, entered for the process to be processed Let's write down about let's write uh, P2 and P3 too with their burst time. So their B, uh, burst time for P2 is 8, burst time for P3 is 7. So um, as I mentioned earlier, for uh, preemptive SJF, we have to see the burst time. As I shortest burst time, you have to emphasize you have to prioritize the shortest burst time. So on these we can see there are three which need to be executed after the P4. You can see that P4 need to be uh, executed in uh, for another 2 milliseconds. P2 is for another 8 milliseconds and P3 for another 7 milliseconds. So from this we know that P4 has the shortest burst time compared to P2 and P3. So we have to process them, process the P4 first for the completion. Okay. So before we complete the thing, let's check whether there is anything arriving uh, in that 2 uh, milliseconds. Okay, there is actually one more one more process arriving, uh, which is P1 and 5 arrival second. This, which means we know that P4 has remaining 2 milliseconds, which will, they, they will stop at 5. And P4 is entering at 5 seconds. P1 is entering at the pi, P1, 5 milliseconds. So this has not caused any intra for P4. They have now we know that uh, P4 have done they have completed their execution and uh, as I stated earlier the second step is we have to always write down the process which has been entered and their burst time which is nine okay okay now now we have to now find which process will be now continue its execution so uh, as I mentioned earlier we have to see the shortest burst time from this we can see that. Uh, P3 has the shortest burst time, so we know that P3 will be executed. Okay, so the PQ P3 will have to be executed for the next seven milliseconds. But then we know that P5 P5 are arriving at nine milliseconds, so this causes an interrupt at P3. Okay, so we let's stop at nine milliseconds here. So, uh, so we are, so now we have to find the remaining burst time for the P3. So, um, okay, so it's nine minus five is four. So let's minus with seven. So it is still has three milliseconds to be executed. At the same time, as I mentioned earlier, every time when a process is enter is being entered, please uh, write it at the below for the to ease our life and our calculation part here. Okay, so here is P5 has been interrupted. Okay, so P5 has the burst time of 10 milliseconds. 
okay now we can now okay we, uh, now we have to find which process to be executed again as i mentioned many times we have to see the shortest burst time again for this part so the shortest burst time uh, is p3 which is 3 milliseconds so p3 will be executed again okay now since everything has been arrived so we know that after after this there won't be any more interrupt so uh, so now p3 can be uh, can be processed until completion so we know it has three has three more milliseconds so so you have to plus with nine so you have 12 milliseconds so we have done with p3 and then now we have to take the shortest burst time again which is p2 um, it has made milliseconds which is 20 and just for confirmation let's check again there is no arrival time between 12 to 18 so we can proceed to the next process which is p9 it has the shortest time with compared to p5 okay so p5 will be completed at 29 milliseconds and then followed by p5 at 39 39 so um, let me like recall back what I said first you have to cho choose the process with the cover by the arrival time choose the shortest arrival time for the in this question p4 arrives first at 0 milliseconds and then we have to check its burst time which is 5 milliseconds the burst time actually shows how many milliseconds left to be executed for the execution to occur so in between the 5 seconds there is one more process there is two more processes arriving which is p2 and p3 in at 3 milliseconds so this causes an interrupt between uh, for the uh, intra interrupt at p4 and then we have to like minus with the the seconds it had been interrupt to find the new burst time for p4 and then we have to compare the burst times of the other arrival choose the shortest burst time uh, and complete the uh, preemptive SGF. So guys, this is the preemptive SGF. Hope you guys understand. Okay guys, since the question has been done, all it's left is waiting time and the average time in order to complete the questions. For waiting time, what we need is the starting time of every process minus with the arrive time. Okay, so first we have to do waiting time. For process 1, the waiting time is 20. Minus with the arrive time will be 1, 5. So 15. For P2, the starting time is 12 minus with 3. The arrive time, so it's 9. For P3, the arrive time, the starting time is 5 minus with 3. It's 2. For P4, starting time to start with 0 with the arrive time 0 equal to 0 for P5 for is 29 minus with 9 the arrive time so it's 20 so what is left is the average waiting time what we need to do is we, talk, we total up all of the waiting time 15 plus 9 plus 2 plus 0 plus 20 divide with 5 because it has 5 process so the answer is 9.2 ms so that's all